here's the question that I pose, is semantic web the fix? Uh, uh, I'm assuming that most people on the webinar have some exposure to the semantic web. Um, it's essentially a, a set of standards that allow um, data to be represented kind of in the way web pages were in the past, where they have URIs to get to them, uh, they can be hosted anywhere in the world, and you know they can be linked together from anywhere in the world. Like I can write a web page and link to another web page on someone else's blog. So Semantic Web is a, is a set of standards that um, does that, but instead of just web pages, it's going to represent kinds of things in the world, orders or people, and relationships that exist in the world, um, like a uh, you know, an, air an airport is located within a city, is located within a country. So we're going from text linked to text to object representations linked to object representations. That's kind of my, my quick uh, background if you didn't know what the semantic web was. Um, and uh, so the first thing about um, the semantic web in terms of could this be uh, the fix for some of the problems we're seeing is that the explicit scope of RDF, which is the basis of the semantic web that stands for resource description framework and it's basically the thing that makes the graph um, the explicit scope uh, of it is web scale it was specifically designed for that it does have global ids uh, it uses uris which as we know are uh, sufficient to uh, to fit the global web um, different organizations can have their domain and therefore they can control what's in that domain um, so they can keep from clobbering each other uh, you know, my website is different than your website. I can manage the, the URIs in that domain. And we can apply this to global IDs so that we can define data or schema uh, and be globally unique about what we mean and allow other people to use our IDs both for data and for schema. Adding to that, um, uh, since the schema is done with these global URIs, it is not only, it's shareable, globally. Um, and then beyond that, um, there's another part of the semantic web called OWL, which is uh, ontology web language. Um, and it is a language for defining schema, known as an ontology, uh, and to do this with unambiguous meaning. So instead of just having a word for something, a term, uh, you might think of a table name or something in a database, and you hope you understand what that word means. Uh, these ontologies allow you to go much deeper than just using a word. You can uh, describe um, not only with textual comments and labels, but you can actually describe what it means in combination with other concepts you've modeled. And we will, I will show you an example of that uh, just a little bit later in the presentation. Uh, finally, semantic web uh, is vendor agnostic. Again, the semantic web um, is essentially a set of W3C standards. Uh, and then you know, different companies um, uh, will uh, implement against that standard. So everything would be interoperable. So you, you're vendor agnostic, you can work with multiple vendors. You can even, uh, makes it easier to change out uh, technology. If you uh, need to switch technology, your data can be uh, brought into and your queries into a different uh, vendor platform and it all still works because it's all standards based. Okay, so um, that's why we think semantic web might be the fix. We'll be showing some examples. Um, so for the purposes of this webinar, when we kind of titled it about uh, semantic uh, web knowledge graph, this is what I really mean. I mean a knowledge graph, so um, a data model that's made of nodes and edges, but in particular, one that is using RDF as the graph uh, technology and an OWL ontology as its schema. So that's what we mean when we talk about a semantic, a semantic knowledge graph with ontology.